Okay. Norm, you're on. Very good. It's good to see you this morning. Nice to be with you again. As you've <clears throat> already been made aware, the EDA, for the first time ever, has come out with a grant application which is useful in promoting travel and tourism. Now, because they've not attempted this in the past, there are some little tweaks and, and twists that they have uh, added to this particular grant application, which did not exist prior to just, just very recently. This grant application has a deadline of January the 31st, 2022, in order to get it in to be considered. I would like, if we're going to prepare that grant application on behalf of Saline County, to try to get it in prior to the deadline. That's typically how we try to uh, get things done in our office. <clears throat> I've been working very closely with Sidney Mayfield, your economic developer, to look at the ways in which this application can be prepared. And the most compelling case that we believe we can write in order to try to gain these grant funds for a proposed visitor center at the Marshall Junction of US 65 and Interstate 70. Uh, we believe that <clears throat> following EDA's guidelines for the application, you can either select an engineer to do the preliminary engineering report that goes into EDA with the application as a one-time effort by that engineer towards the project, or you can select an engineer to do both the preliminary engineering report and then the full design and construction plan should the award, the grant award, be made to Saline County. So I'll make that distinction really clear for you because EDA is very particular about this. If you select a preliminary engineering uh, report firm, but you do not select them at the very beginning to do the whole enchilada, that is the preliminary and then the design and then the construction inspection, should you become awarded with the, with the grant, if you select them just to do the preliminary engineering, they cannot be considered to do the design or the construction inspection. So the initial RFQ has to be real particular as to which way do you want to go. Do you want to hire an engineer just to do the preliminary engineering report with his understanding or her understanding then that they would not be eligible to try to apply to design the facility if you get the award? Or do you want to select an engineer from the outset who you plan to have do your preliminary engineering report and if you get the grant award, perform the construction design and the construction inspection services? So at this juncture, that's probably the most important decision that you have before you. I have emailed uh, you all an RFQ, that is a request for qualifications from engineers, that does the first of those two alternatives. It offers this as work for the engineer to do the preliminary engineering report, and then to also perform construction design and inspection contingent on if the award is granted by EDA for Saline County to do this project. So I, I need a little bit of guidance from you all as to whether you'd prefer to have the RFQ in that form or if you think it might be better to have one engineer do your preliminary engineering report and that engineer then to be completely unqualified, disqualified from doing the design and the inspection and to do another RFQ later to select an engineer to do design 
and inspection services. So that would be twice the cost for this to be advertised, is that what you're saying? And it's not covered by the grant, this will be upfront preliminary expenses that the we have The preliminary engineering report is not covered by the grant. Okay, no. and it's not reimbursed by the grant either, this is Correct. at the sole expense of the county? Absolutely. Now, the design and inspection, that can be covered as part of the grant. So when the engineer, whatever engineer you would select to put together the construction design and then to inspect the construction once it began, that could be encompassed by grant and paid for, reimbursed by grant dollars. So can I ask a quick question? Absolutely. If the commission were to pursue a published RFQ for both the preliminary engineering report and then, as you said, the whole enchilada, how long do they have to advertise that request for qualifications? Does this run two weeks, a month? I mean, what delay are they looking at? 20 days is the minimum. EDA likes to see between 20 and 30 days, and we're far enough out from the January 31st deadline that I believe we could go the 30 days. We have to get started rather quickly, though. We do. And I have sent this RFQ to EDA to get their approval of it. I have not heard back yet, but because we're following their form and their function, I expect to hear approval back from EDA on the way the RFQ is written shortly. Okay, so in addition to the advertising expense for 20 to 30 days for this RFQ, will we have to pay for the preliminary engineering report that is solely on the county as well? It is. In your experience, what are those costs? It all depends upon how intricate and how large a facility you're talking about. But I've seen 5,000, maybe 6,000 or $7,000 spent on preliminary engineering report. And those are not reimbursed? Correct. And the preliminary engineering report itself also has to take a certain form and outline that EDA provides. So once an engineer is selected, whether they're selected to do just the preliminary report or to do the whole enchilada, then they would have to follow the outline that EDA prescribes for the preliminary engineering report. It has to be done to EDA. They would present the engineer with the plans, what size. I mean, I don't know if engineers do all that. Structural engineers do. So when we approved this grant a couple of weeks ago, this has been a change since the initial thought process? Or has it been a new change from EDA? It's new because the program is new. Okay. I've been operating as though my first thought when they put the application out there was they will do this in the same manner that they carry out their normal economic adjustment program. Okay. And I was close. But there are some little twists and tweaks that they have made to make this program a little bit different. Nothing serious, nothing big, but one of these little twists and tweaks is when you select your engineer, you get to select them for everything. Or if you select them just for preliminary engineering, that puts them out of the running to do the construction and the inspection. Why? Why is that? Well, EDA's experience, I think, with their economic adjustment program that they've been offering all these years has kind of shown them. If an engineer is offered the preliminary engineering report work and they do that work, then if they weren't offered all of the work, when they come back and send in their qualifications to do the construction inspection and the construction design, they have an advantage over any other engineer that would want to qualify to do that work. And so EDA's decided instead of the preliminary report engineering firm having that advantage coming into a second round for the preliminary engineering work, they're going to have to pay for the work. Thank you. Thank you.
for construction and design and inspection. They'd rather just have that competitive set of qualification and selection, all that done at once, or if the report's done by an engineer that was selected just for the reporting, count that engineer out. Well, we've learned you got to have an engineer or you'll never get a grant, ever. Yeah. But in the first deadline, October 1st deadline, that wasn't talked about, <coughs> that we would right. need this. So right. this is all new discovery or new guidelines provided it, by EDA? They keep giving more guidelines. Okay. And this is one of those part of the guidelines that came in slightly different from what I anticipated. Okay. Because it's just a little change, not much of a change, but a little change in the way they've been doing business at EDA. When do we determine what size of facility we're going to have and how many acres it's going to take? The preliminary engineering report can guide you in that decision because the engineer will have a recommendation, but along with the recommendation, the engineer will probably offer one or two other alternatives. And you'll want to consider the alternatives that are included in that preliminary engineering report. So basically, the preliminary engineering report will be the architectural design of the whole facility no. as well as the land surveyed and that? No. No. Okay. The engineer will just look at where it would be situated, okay. what kind of ground is available in order to uh, support the foundation, what kind of uh, wind shears they think the roof is going to have to sustain, what kinds of uh, state building codes the building would have to uh, come up to, all those factors, and then start looking at uh, square feet compared to other visitor centers around the country and give you some alternatives as to what might be best for the project. It's, it's just a conceptual that gives you a good idea of whether the project is one that can be done for the kind of uh, funding that you're seeking. But that sounds like to me, like if you're going to look at wind shear, roofing, mm -hmm. you're going to have to have some sort of architectural design in mind, right? For the engineer to be like, okay, this is what we envision this center to look like and, and any, anything else ancillary with it in order for them to make that evaluation. Is that a fair statement? I believe that they will do a comparative look okay. at other visitor centers. And they'll take, they'll learn, they'll take from that experience as they're doing their preliminary report. Well, would it be, I'm just trying to clarify because I don't want any more hidden costs to pop out at the county. I just do not, that's what I'm here, I think the county to find out, and I am too. Do they need to retain an architect now at this point to better position them for the award of this grant? Because that would be an additional cost for the county, I assume. And if they do need that architect, can that architectural cost at this stage before grant submission be reimbursed if the grant is awarded? It would not be reimbursed before the grant is awarded. It because it's a cost before the grant is awarded. But it will add on to the cost <coughs> for your ballpark of five to seven thousand. It will be. It an could be. Okay. And the reason I say it could be, if you select an engineering firm that includes an architect along with structural engineer, then they're going to do that work as part of the report. That will just become a part, a natural part of the report itself. And, and that would be my recommendation when you're considering engineering firms to do the preliminary engineering report. I would think you would want to have an engineering firm that has either an architect on staff or has an architect that they consult with on a regular basis and that they name in their qualification statement as being available for a consult when they do the preliminary engineering report. Should that then be set out in this RFQ? Because it is not. That's so part I'm just of the wondering if we should add that. We if do we need, need to, to refine okay. this okay. RFQ. And yeah, that can be put right in there.
Mark, is there anything you'd like to add to this? I can't think of anything right now, Monty. Except one of my concerns with the Welcome Center, should it be cited on my property, would be that it be staffed and not just something that's restrooms with brochures in it, you know. And the better we can flesh out that plan as to how it would be staffed, of course, the stronger our application will compel the folks at EDA as to if they're wanting to invest here. These EDA applications for travel and tourism, I've been told, have a range. They're considering applications that run from half a million dollars up to approximately $2 million. So if we're looking for a project that's going to run in excess of a million, but maybe less than a million and a half, that's EDA's sweet spot for this particular grant application. But I thought we were originally seeking, was it three to five? It was two to three million. Two to three million, okay. Okay, but you're saying that no? The more I have learned, the sweet spot is going to be just short of two million in that one and a half million dollar range. And I'm sorry that there are so many things that are in flux. I apologize on behalf of EDA for that. But it is my belief that had they ever had a travel and tourism application before in the past, ever, we wouldn't see these fluctuations. So you anticipate a successful grant to be at half a million dollars? No, about a million and a half. About a million and a half, okay. Somewhere in that range. Okay. The smallest that they're going to consider is going to be a half million. But it looks now as though they want to cap it at two million. So it's somewhere in the one and a half million dollar range that we would need to make sure the engineer could give us the word, you know, yes, it can be built for that. Okay. And if it can't, you know, then the preliminary engineering report may be a report that tells us the application can't go forward. I mean, I would hope that a nice visitor center could be constructed for a million and a half. But, you know, we'd be relying on the engineer to tell us that. Yeah. And that is going to be one of the constraints in terms of how big a facility can be built, frankly. And the match is successful with the improvements that have already been made at the junction. You are confident of that? I feel pretty certain that many of those expenditures that you're in the process of making can be counted towards that 20% match. If we have the land donated to us, will the value of the land that is donated to the county also be able to be applied towards that 20% match potentially? If the donation of the land falls in the right time frame, that can be counted towards the 20% as well. So what is the right time frame? You've said that. So what are we not knowing? That's the first time we've heard that. So when does that have to happen or not happen? It should be planned within the application so that we can refer to it in the application. But it should not be transacted until the grant is awarded. Which makes sense because I think that our potential individual here that he might be considering donating some land, obviously would probably not consider donating it unless it was being used for a regional law center. So that would make sense. A lot of things to consider. It is a lot to consider. Harry has already put together the letter notifying the tribal nations of the interest that we would have in putting together this proposal and this application. So those letters are ready to go out just as soon as you tell me they should go out in the mail. And then I'll put together the State Historic Preservation Office form so that we can get them started in Jefferson City to look at the property and see if that property would be 
in harmony with uh, the idea of a visitor center and not uh, have any problems in terms of cultural heritage. A couple of things that I would want to do within the application to make it stronger for EDA because EDA has now adopted a set of goals and one of those goals is to bring more equity to people uh, in any region who have in the past been underserved or underrepresented. And so as part of this application, I would like to kind of highlight the fact that this would be a great way to get people off the interstate to go visit Van Meter State Park and to learn more about Native Americans. This would be a visitor center that would be very helpful in getting people off of the interstate to stop and go visit Pennytown and learn a little bit about the African American presence in this region. Also the Scott Joplin House for the same reason. And then there's also a little bitty uh, museum and library just inside the city limits of Sedalia uh, devoted to African American history in this region. And it's not very well known, but it is another attraction that this visitor center so in the city of Miami, the Promote. Second Baptist Church, it's a um, historic black church um, that belongs to the Friends of Miami, and they Wonderful. also have a museum uh, fully operating in Miami as well. Great. So. <laughs> we will include that mm -hmm. in the list of those things that we want to bring to people's attention as they travel through our region, and that will make the, the application a bit more compelling. Very good. So, have to find an engineer, don't we? Mm -hmm. And first, I need to get uh, the EDA uh, approval of the RFQ in order that we can get that ball rolling. And I think Sydney is suggesting that we make specific reference to the engineering ref uh, firm having the services of an architect available for the preliminary engineering report is absolutely germane, spot on point. I agree. So we'll work together to refine the RFQ between us and EDA. And as soon as we've got it refined and EDA's approval on it, we'll hand it over to you to get it out there. Do we have an estimate just about how quickly EDA has been responding to like just correspondence? How quickly they may respond to this you think a week or two weeks before the I'm commission comes I'm a little bit surprised they don't already have a response. I'm just that's a little concerning with the 20 to 30 day time frame the commission yeah. has to publish this and how quickly will they respond so we can quickly get moving on this to have it as, you know in before that January deadline right I thought I would have a response by now because it's been several days since I sent it over to EDA for them to look it over but I'll double check and find out why I don't have a response yet good what's the timeline here what 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 do you need from us? Uh, Hopefully what? to get the RFQ out there and I'll have a list of firms to whom you should send it in addition to putting it in the paper because EDA will want you to solicit some firms directly with uh, e an email or mailing the, e the RFQ to them and then uh, we'll get it also in, in the paper. And that hopefully will take place next week. <coughs> question? Any more questions? No, I think so. Thank you, Norm. Thank you. I'm excited about this project. And I understand that Harry's last day is tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. And I am really, really going to miss this guy. This guy has been excellent. And over the last two years, he has helped me with all kinds of things having to do with EDA and, and CDBG and our comprehensive economic development uh, strategy. Uh, by the way, one of the EDA requirements of this application is that it does harmonize with our comprehensive economic development strategy that we do at the RPC for the whole region. And indeed it does. It falls under improving quality of life and specifically recreational facilities that can be brought to to uh, pass within the region to supplement recreational activities. 
One of the other things that will make this application stronger is the possibility of having some trails through prairie grass in order that folks at the visitor center, if they want to take some time to stretch their legs, can walk in and get a look at what prairie would have looked like back in the day. I had a question. Who, uh, who will operate the uh, Welcome Center should it be built? Will the county operate it or will, will Pioneer Trails operate it as the four county area? Or it would how be does a, that work? a county facility, but hopefully it would be operated by a consortium of those folks who are invested in making sure that visitor center sends people to various destinations. So I'm hoping that Sedalia will want to be in on it. I already know Warrensburg is interested. I believe that uh, Marshall will be terribly interested. I would hope that maybe Sweet Springs and Miami and Arrow Rock. Lexington. Lexington. They'd all take an interest in, in helping operate that well, that visitor's welcome center so that they can all glean the benefit of having folks come from there having stopped along the highway. Okay. Thank you, Norm. Thank you, Norm. Thank you. I'll be talking with you soon. Okay. All right. Good luck with the new job, Harry. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Harry. Thank you. And, and keep in mind, if you ever need one, you've got to, got to have a friend at CDBG, yes, at the Department CDBG. of Economic Development in Jeff City. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Cindy. Yes, sir. You what? You got anything to add? Or I'm going down my. No, I think I've asked my questions, and I will continue to work with Norm, especially on this refining the RFQ to make sure that we have like the architectural information, and I'll get that as quick to Norm as possible about a, maybe a possible blurb or a sentence to include into that, so we can get her sent back to EDA. But I will continue to work with Norm, and obviously continue to share information as I get it with the commission. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. 